Is there life on our twin planet? Do Venusians exist? For almost a century, scientists have mulled over this subject. Still, the temperature on Venus, which is high enough to melt lead, and the air pressure over 90 times that on Earth, have prevented them from finding an answer. Researchers claimed in 2020 that they had found phosphine in Venus's atmosphere. Interestingly, only microorganisms and scientific facilities on Earth can produce this kind of gas. Does phosphine play a role in life and death on what we call our morning and evening star? Could there be another form of life in our solar system? Let's find out. When NASA's Mariner 2 successfully passed by and surveyed the cloud-covered world of Venus on December 14, 1962, it became the first spacecraft to visit a planet. Many spacecraft, such as NASA's Magellan, which use radar to analyze Venus's surface, have also been studying the hot planet. The Soviet Union performed the most successful landing on Venus, but their spacecraft didn't last long, owing to the planet's sizzling heat and pressure that can crush anything. In 1978, one of NASA's pioneer Venus multiprobes crashed into the surface of Venus and managed to stay alive. However, it only lasted for an hour. Undoubtedly, we have dispatched many missions to Venus, and more are on the way. The surface of Venus, as seen by Mariner 2 and Venera 14, have been measured at a blazing 900 degrees Fahrenheit. No wonder it is considered a runaway greenhouse. Prehistorically, Venus was not the pressure cooker it is now. Like Earth, it had oceans made of liquid water and volcanic activity. In the millions of years following its birth, some 4.6 billion years ago, Venus's temperature began to rise, causing its oceans to slowly evaporate. There are microscopic organisms called extremophiles that can thrive in environments that would kill out most other forms of life on Earth. Researchers speculate that these prehistoric species may have adapted to the shifting environments on Venus and ultimately found a new home within the planet's dense atmosphere. Venus's surface is thought to have been roasted, but some researchers believe that the possible survivors of the planet's surface ecosystem, which are the microbes, may have sought sanctuary in the clouds above. It was announced on June 14, 2022, that scientists from the University of Cambridge have investigated the possibility of microorganisms thriving in Venus's atmosphere, but they think it's a long shot. Meanwhile, another recent research by Greaves in 2020 and others provides further confirmation of phosphine's existence. Why is there phosphine in Venus's atmosphere? When did it get there? The presence of phosphine raises more questions than it answers. Life in the clouds hypothesis is what the Cambridge group was trying to figure out. Some of you probably already know that carbon dioxide and sulfuric acid clouds cover Venus like a blanket. On Venus though, sulfur dioxide displays some strange properties. They are curious whether the peculiar behavior of sulfur was due to the presence of life which they say is the primary energy source in Venus's clouds. While it can be found in great abundance near the ground, at higher altitudes, it appears to be sucked out of the shadows. Because of this, can life on Venus be the reason why there is such a dramatic drop in sulfur dioxide levels? According to scientific speculation, sulfur could be a food source for these possible organisms in Venus's atmosphere. So, the decline in sulfur dioxide levels may have been caused by the microbes consuming it in the atmosphere. Then, the other chemical waste products should also be released into the air. They'd be belching out a diverse range of chemicals meant for disposal. Yet, they don't appear to be there. Scientists haven't been able to locate the predicted waste products. But even if life is not to blame for the weird chemistry on Venus, there is still a mystery to be solved. By sending the Pioneer Venus Orbiter and Multiprobe missions in 1978, scientists could dive deep into Venus's atmosphere. No absolute confirmation was made, but they found evidence of gases comparable with phosphine. Since then, there has been heated discussion among academics, with some competing study groups reporting similar traces of this toxic gas. Creating phosphine is challenging in an oxidized environment like our atmosphere, making it rare yet interesting evidence of life. Since it is so challenging to produce phosphine on rocky planets in the absence of life, phosphine has a unique place in the chemical universe. It is produced industrially here on Earth, as well as by anaerobic microbes and in the digestive systems of penguins. Given that Venus has an anaerobic environment, it seemed perfectly logical to search for phosphine there. After all, we find phosphine in anaerobic conditions here on Earth. 
the Jane Greaves team announced sent shockwaves through the entire globe. Their team identified phosphine spectral fingerprints, or light base signatures, in Venus's atmosphere. Their research found evidence of phosphine at a level of 20 parts per billion. The researchers claimed that the levels of gas that they had identified on Venus could not have been produced by any non-biological activity. A molecule of phosphine has around a 16-minute life in the extreme, highly acidic conditions found in Venus's atmosphere. This is why phosphine is considered to be relatively unstable. It is essential for there to be a consistent supply of the gas, as well as a significant amount of it, to balance its continual destruction. Again, a phosphine signal was detected, but this time at much lower concentrations. Phosphine is only found at an average concentration of one part per billion, which is quite lower than the first detection level of 20 parts per billion. However, some areas may reach a high of approximately 5 parts per billion. Even so, that's a major change from the initial observation. The unknown absorber is also another puzzle. It's a layer of mysterious atmospheric particles on Venus that absorbs UV light like certain microbes on Earth. The particles are estimated to be around the size and shape of bacteria, and they are not circular. However, their makeup is still a head-scratcher. Have we found potential examples of life? Until we send another mission to Venus, we won't know the answer to that. Right now, NASA is planning two new missions, Da Vinci and Veritas. Since Venus shares so many similarities with Earth, it may have been the first habitable world in the solar system, replete with an ocean and Earth-like climate. So these missions hope to decipher how the planet devolved into a blazing inferno. Their projected launch date ranges from 2028 to 2030. In addition, the Envision mission will be launched by the European Space Agency, or ESA, to Venus in the early 2030s. Sanjay LeMay, a university scientist, has Venus as his area of expertise. He has spent almost 45 years studying the planet's atmosphere and is still digging deeper. Compared to other bodies like Titan, Enceladus, or Mars, he believes Venus is easier to access because it is one of our closest neighbors. He always explored the possibility that Venus could support microorganisms like bacteria and other creatures. We all know that Venus's size and density are so close to that of Earth that the two are often compared, often being called Earth's twin. However, it's important to note that they are not precisely identical. Some differences are, of course, the blistering heat, the dense and toxic atmosphere, and the rusty coloration of Venus. Also, they probably don't have a bunch of old politicians arguing over nonsense up there. Maybe I should book a ticket on NASA's next mission to Venus. LeMay agrees with the other scientists that the planet's surface is unwelcoming. Any form of life would indeed have a tough time surviving on Venus. But he also believed that the planet's dense cloud cover may present kinder conditions for some microscopic life forms. This is due to the availability of sunshine, nutrients, and water. All of these can produce restricted but habitable zones like those hypothesized in the atmosphere. According to LeMay, the planet's potential to support life is strengthened by its middle and lower clouds enduring less UV flux. Further, cloud droplets that contain salt may be less acidic and therefore better able to support life as we know it. Amidst the planet's reputation as an extreme environment for life, we are optimistic that further exploration missions will one day shed light on many of the questions raised. These endeavors of finding life have sparked interest in Earth's other planetary neighbors. As scientists strive to understand several planets in and outside our solar system, Venus serves as a helpful reference point. Mars has long been regarded as the best contender in the solar system beyond Earth to have housed microbial life, as suggested by background methane levels. Exploration of the Red Planet is being pursued in some capacity or another by several international organizations, including NASA, the European Space Agency, and others. Moreover, NASA is working on plans for a flagship mission to explore Jupiter's moons. The frozen crust of one of Jupiter's largest and most well-known moons, Europa, is thought by scientists to conceal a salty ocean that may or may not be habitable. This ocean is believed to be warmed up by tidal pressures and gravitational interactions with other moons in Jupiter's system. Other icy moons on the solar system's outskirts, which could be described as water worlds, are also potential research subjects. We still can't say for sure that life exists beyond our own, but we can say that there's something truly unknown that could be life somewhere out there. 
where do you think you'd find life outside of Earth? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a like. Thanks for watching.